Okay, so we have here another article about principles of investing. So this one is from natmeg.com. Okay. Yung kanina, uh, three principles, uh, article from Investopedia. Um, all right. So yung introduction niya dito, the world of investment management can be complex, especially kung, you know, the riskier the assets are or the investments are, medyo, you know, you would uh, require, it would require more knowledge to navigate the waters, okay? But regardless of that, there are certain investing principles that can aid any aspirational investor. Essentially, what you need is knowledge, okay? Um, things that you can use to analyze uh, the, what do you call that, the position or the ability or the capability of a particular investment, okay? So regardless of how much money you want to invest, at the six principles at all, will stand you in good stead. Okay, so your first principle niya, remember the trade-off between risk and the return. Okay, so you have your low risk, low return, high risk, high return. Okay, for more riskier, more na riskier pa, for riskier investment, so the reason why they offer higher returns then is of course to attract investors. Okay, um, depending on the type of investors then, so we have three, conservative, moderate, and aggressive. Normally, Yung mga riskier assets, ang target nila, of course, ay yung mga aggressive types of investors. And itong mga aggressive investors na to, uh, they are willing to put their money into risky assets as long as yung possibility nga ng uh, return is mas mataas then of course. Yun lang naman yun, alright? And then, um, another thing to consider is, um, yung types of investments na kukunin mo should, uh, you know, tawag dito, yung, hindi naman sa, uh, ano yung word, so, magsaswak dun sa uh, risk assessment mo. Okay, kasi syempre kailangan ay kampante ka, okay, dun sa types of investments na kukunin mo. So, kung, kung conservative investor ka, uh, kumbaga hindi ka kayanin ng puso mo or ng damdamin mo, kapag nag-invest ka in riskier asset, tapos makikita mo nagre-red yung numbers, naglo-loss, yung capital na nilagay mo doon is uh, bumababa na yung value. Okay, so in a way, um, you have to balance diba, yung type, kung anong type of investor ka and the type of asset that you are willing to take on. Okay, so kung mag-hahanapin hahanapin mo nga yung balance between the risk and the return then na kaya mong, kumbaga, kaya mong sigmurain. Alright. So, different types of investments tend to have different levels of risk associated with them. So, stocks yung uh, high risk compared to bonds. Tapos, yung mga bonds issued by government, almost risk-free compared to, you know, the bonds issued by private companies. Emerging market stocks tend to be riskier than developed market stocks. Okay, so yung mga nasa PSE, normally mga, you know, vetted na yung vetted companies. Tapos, of course, there are startup companies, um, hindi ganun ka, tawag dito, ka-dependable or ka-reliable uh, yung kanilang numbers and yung kanilang proposals, ganyan. So, riskier. Uh, the higher the risk, the greater potential there is for higher return on your investment. Though you must also understand that the value of your investment may go down as well as up. Okay. Um, ito, one thing to note. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean na high risk yung isang investment is meron lang siyang uh, possibility of higher return. Okay. Meron kasing certain types of investments or certain types of businesses na kita mo na na very risky siya tapos hindi mo makita in what way it's going to provide you with a return. Okay, merong mga certain uh, businesses na ganon. Okay, and in a way, it's important na for a new investor, alam mo kung paano i-discern yung ganong types of investments. Okay, later, pag-uusapan natin yan, um, pagdating dun sa each particular type of investment. Okay? Um, what else? Either way, investment portfolios and like savings accounts are designed to experience volatility. When it comes to investments, volatility is your friend. Okay, because in a way, uh, diba, 
two sources of income kasi yan, yung dividends or interest and then the second one is yung uh, volatility in the prices yung nagbabago yung price market price no investment or ng security either tumataas siya or bumababa and of course nandun lang siya sa you know strategy mo on how you can snatch up the investment when the price is low and how you can sell them when the price is high okay yun yung Pinapa, in a way, binabanggit nila na it sounds easy, it sounds simple. Pero pag andun ka na sa mismong point na yon malalaman mo na lang bakit wala nagbabenta, okay, during that point. Okay, although you want to buy during that low point, wala namang nagbabenta, okay. Although meron man na magbenta, marami naman kayo na bibili, okay. And then of course, meron... Uh, ang pagdating kasi sa stock market, meron siyang bid na tinatawag. Ano, magkano yung price na gusto mong bilhin itong particular na investment. Kung yung isang tao is, of course, higher yung bid compared to yours, edi siya yung mauuna na makabili ng stock compared to you. Alright? So, of course, uh, balance rin kasi yan. And in a way, affected din siya nung, you know, uh, supply and demand. Okay, marami ang buyers, mas marami kaysa sa sellers, or minsan mas marami ang sellers kaysa sa buyers, kaya yung uh, market price niya, nag adjust din, pababa, di ba? Kunwari, nag-set ka ng selling price for 10 pesos, eh wala namang taker, okay? Yung nakikita mong bid nung highest na buyer is 9.1. Oh. Eh kung kailangan-kailangan mo na ng pera, eh syempre, Iintayin mo pa ba na mag-bid siya ng mataas? Eh, ayaw niyang gumalaw din. So, it's either taasan niya yung bid niya para kunin mo or ibaba mo yung bid mo para kunin niya. Okay? So, you meet halfway. And in a way, that's how uh, the price of certain stocks, especially itong stock market, ano, is driven by economics pa din, demand and supply. Alright? Okay, so yung second principle natin is be diversified. So, di ba yung ating subject, investment and portfolio management. When it comes to portfolio management, ano ba yung portfolio na i-manage natin? Ibig sabihin lang nun, you get different types of investments and you call that a portfolio. Tapos yung portfolio na yun, you have to manage it. How do you manage that? So, yung una doon, be diversified. Uh, kukuha ka ng investments, kailangan magkakaiba sila ng types. Uh, kung stock market ka man mag-focus, kailangan uh, companies from from different industries ang kukunin mo. Okay? Para yung reaction nila towards a certain situ- uh, towards a certain situation is magkakaiba. Okay? Hindi yung kunwari, um, nag-invest ka ng you know, pera mo sa mga hotels and restaurants okay? or nag-invest ka sa airline companies. Dumating ang pandemic, yung mga companies na napili mo, pare-pareho ng reaction towards the uh, pandemic situation. Lahat sila, uh, you know, with, with regards to lockdown, lahat sila hindi makakilos, hindi makapag-operate. Okay? Unlike kung diver- very diversified yung iyong portfolio, meron kang investments across different industries. So you have your airlines, you have your uh, medical field, then you have your different manufacturing companies, especially manufacturer ng, um, how do you call that, PPE, and then you have your manufacturer of food products. Uh, normally, hindi naman yun nawawala, di ba? Uh, no matter what the, sit- no matter the situation, uh, hindi nawawala yung mga necessities, okay? Or nag uh, nag-invest ka din sa, let's say, uh, computer, manuf- manufacturer ng computers or gadgets na in a way, nag-boom, nag-boom din sila because of, you know, the online classes. And then, of course, you have your telecommunication companies, mataas or dumami ang subscribers sa mga internet providers. Uh, ganun din dun sa smart or globe, di ba? Kasi yung iba data lang ang gamit. And then, um, you also have online sellers, okay? Mga online apps or online platforms na ginagamit ng sellers to deliver their products to the customers. Nag-boom din yan, di ba? Ang dami ng kanila mga naging transaction when the pandemic started. And, you know, nag-prolong pa yung pandemic. So, ayan. Nakikita natin ngayon kung 
uh, papaano nag-react yung different types of industries dun sa situation na yun. Okay? And then, of course, hindi lang naman pandemic. Naging example lang natin kasi siya yung current situation. Other examples, for example, um, what do you call that? Political agenda ng mga politicians natin. Okay? Meron kasing, di ba, during their um, campaign, merong mga certain politicians na uh, binabanggit na nila kung ano yung mga gagawin nila kapag sila ay naupo sa pwesto, ano yung mga batas na i- for propose nila, gusto nila maipatupad, and from there, um, some of the bills or, you know, the proposed laws nitong mga politicians nito, sometimes they do affect the businesses, okay? Let's say, merong mga, uh, bis- hindi naman business, merong mga politicians, kasi normally related din sila sa mga businessmen, eh. either sila mismo, yung mga may businesses, or yung family nila may hawak na mga businesses. So, sometimes, yes, they do, in fact, um, propose bills that would benefit them in a way. Okay, but anyway, let's not be political here. Okay, so for example, um, gusto nilang taasan ulit ang taxes on thin products. Okay, example ng thin products, cigarettes, um, liquors, ayan. So gusto nilang taasan ulit yung taxes because, you know, they want to discourage uh, Filipinos from consuming their prod- this, these products para, you know, makapag-focus daw sa kung ano man, okay? But, of course, pagdating dun sa manufacturer side, yung mga gumagawa nitong products na to, of course, affected yung kanilang um, business. Either they're going to try and minimize their cost or they're going to have to increase their prices, which would in turn affect the demand for uh, the products. Okay. They could either, you know, lower the supply so they could, you know, drive up the price, okay, without uh, trying to get it affected by the demand or the change in the demand no product. Okay. That was meron ding certain uh, politicians, they would, uh, uh, diba yung previously then, um, gustong ipasara yung mga mining, com- uh, mga mining companies because they want to protect the environment or things like that. So, in that sense naman, affected yung mga uh, mining companies. Okay? Tapos, uh, let's say other instances, before, around 2016-2017, yung CPD, about the CPD law. Uh, di ba yung mga CPAs, they were required to get 120 CPD units for their accreditation. Although, ngayon pa rin naman, ganun pa din. But, when it comes to license renewal, dati 120 rin yung hinihingi. Pero sa ngayon, 15 units na lang. Okay? So, in that sense, yung mga CPD providers, back then, maraming uh, nagsulputan din na providers kasi nga, ang taas nung demand. Okay? But, nung binaba na ulit siya, um, isa ako dun sa mga umalis na sa pagiging CPD provider kasi bumaba na rin naman yung demand and I would have no use for too many CPD units. Mga ganong bagay lang. Okay? So, yan. Yeah, mga ganong types of um, situations that could affect the businesses then. Tapos, of course, others pa um, what do you call that? Yung mga changes siguro in uh, social perspective then ng public, in general public. So, for example, mga plastic products, uh, they're trying to be environment uh, conscious, diba? they're trying to minimize the waste. So, in a way, they're trying to boycott yung mga businesses daw na gumagamit ng too much waste in their products. So, sometimes the businesses are forced to use eco-materials, mga ganyan, eco-packaging or environmental friendly packaging and whatnot. Okay. Tapos, um, with regards naman sa export or import transactions between countries, so of course, affected the uh, relationship between the two countries and of course, the political situation or politi- political system uh, nung other party. Okay. So, for example, yung uh, I don't want to mention any anything, but uh, meron mga ganun, um certain countries na hindi kagandahan yung current um, situation politically okay uh, government government wise and so in a way merong mga countries na of course uh, hindi trip or hindi gusto na makipag uh, transaction with those countries because of the uncertainty 
in their governance or in their political landscape. Okay, so may mga ganun. And again, those would affect the types of investments that are in your portfolio. Normally, sa portfolio management, ano yung nangyayari? Kapag yung isang particular investment is hindi maganda yung kanyang performance at consistent for, let's say, a number of months, ganun yung kanyang performance, pababa siya ng pababa, meron tayong tinatawag na cut loss, ano, hindi mo nahihintayin na tumaas ulit yung price niyan, ang gagawin mo na is patuloy mo na yung loss mo hanggang dito na lang yung loss, event mo na yung investment, and then you try to get another investment, okay? Na hopefully, eh of course, by applying certain analysis, knowledge, considering different factors, is uh, you're going to hope that this new investment or the replacement would perform better. Okay, tapos ano naman siya, rinse and repeat. Uh, lahat ng investments na bumubuo dun sa portfolio mo, you have to monitor yung kanyang performance. Kung maganda yung performance niya, edi retain mo lang siya dyan sa portfolio. Kung hindi maganda yung performance niya, edi sell mo na, palitan mo na iba. Okay? Or there are times naman na maganda yung performance and you think na hanggang dito na lang siya, yan na yung pick niya. And soon, uh, the price is going to go down na din. So, pwede mo na rin siya namang ibenta. Okay? Kapag yung sa tingin mo is yun na yung pinakang pick ng particular investment na yun. Okay? So, yun yung kumbaga main point ng portfolio management or diversification. Bakit din na diversify yung isang portfolio. Okay? You have to have investments in various industries na mag -re react differently in a particular situation. Kasi kung pare-pareho sila ng reaction, pare-parehong pababa yung kanilang reaction to a particular situation, edi luwing lugi ka. Okay? Maigi sana kung yung kanilang reaction ay positive, edi lahat yan ay kikita. Ano. Pero kung negative, edi luwing lugi ka. So, normally yung portfolio, what you're trying to do is, for a particular situation, merong mag-thrive, tapos merong mag- uh, sa suffer, pero yung uh, yung magiging profit ng mga magta-thrive na investment, saka yung losses ng mga magta-suffer na investment, they would balance each other out lang. Ano, parang babalance nila, nila and in a way, uh, parang magkakaroon sa pa rin naman ng counting profit. That's the goal. Ano, hindi naman exactly zero kapag nag-counteract yung reaction ng opposite uh, movements ng investments mo. Okay? So, ayun. Principle number three, invest for the long term. Okay? So, uh, normally, sa mga passive investors, ito yung ginagawa. Ano? Invest for the long term. Uh, pero again, the pandemic has proven that some of these are not applicable. And applicable sila kung, you know, normal situation in the economy. Pero, Kapag merong mga ganitong unexpected situations like the pandemic, uh, hindi mo maasahan itong invest for the long term. Kasi currently, for example, uh, may mga stocks na yung kanilang current market price is the same as their market price like 5 years ago or 10 years ago. So in a sense, hindi mo makita yung uh, appreciation in the price for the, in the long term. Okay, kasi na-counter siya no? particular situation, which is the pandemic, okay? Pero kung wala sigurong pandemic, malamang sa malamang, uh, before the pandemic naman eh, if titignan mo yung figures before the pandemic, malaki talaga. May laki yung agwat ng market price ng mga stocks or companies compared to 5 years ago or 10 years ago, okay? Doon mo makikita yung appreciation ng price over time talaga, okay? Ang kataon lang na may pandemic na, okay? Principle number four, rebalance, reinvest. So, okay. So, ito yung nabanggit ko kanina na, uh, di ba, you have your portfolio, imo-monitor mo syempre yung performance ng individual investments in the portfolio. Yung maganda, pwede mong i-retain or kapag tingin mo na-reach na niya yung peak, pwede mo nang ibenta para ma-realize mo yung profit. Or, kung hindi kagandahan yung performance ng particular investment, ikat mo na yung losses mo, ibenta mo na. Tapos, hanap ka ng panibagong uh, type of investment kung saan ilalagay mo yung pinagbentahan yun. Okay? So, ayun. Para kumbaga, minimize mo kasi yung risk din. Ano? And of course, yung portfolio mo should have uh, different types of investment na uh, 
magkakaiba sila na magiging reaction given a particular uh, situation. Okay? Okay, principle number five, keep cost in line with your investment approach. Okay? So, normally, merong standardized, uh, what do you call it, standardized cost or fees na kailangan mong bayaran when you trade stocks or in cases ng other investments, merong iba mga transaction fees, registration fees, mga ganyan. So, you have to also consider ano, kung magkano yung magagastos mo in uh, the processing or in those other costs in relation to acquiring the investment. Okay? Hindi mo lang basta titignan yung market price ng isang investment or ng isang stock. Kailang i-consider mo rin kung magkano yung magagastos mo in Commissions, transactions, registration, ganyan. And of course, yung eventual sale, magkano yung cost to sell mo. Okay? So, ayun. And then lastly, use your tax-free allowances, ISAs, pensions, and much more. Okay? Normally, kapag nilagay mo kasi yung investments mo in, let's say, retirement plan. And uh, retirement plan, some people are looking at it as a type of investment, ano? So, set aside ka ng pera, use it, uh, put it on your uh, pension plan or retirement fund. Tapos, normally, yung retirement fund kasi is ta non-taxable. Normally, okay? And then, uh, another thing, why, they, why they're also, why they also prefer yung long-term investments. Normally, kapag more than 5 years kasi yung investment, non-taxable din siya, okay? Kapag short-term yung investment, medyo mataas yung rate ng taxes. Okay, so that's another consideration that you might want to take into account. Diba, hindi yung nag-invest ka ng 1 million tapos 20%. Uh, let's say, kumita yung 1 million mo ng 200,000 tapos 20% to 30% non is mapapapunta sa government through taxes lang. So, there are those things. Okay, so you have to consider if merong possibility na maging tax free yung iyong investment. Okay. okay, so ayun lang for this particular article. Next na ulit tayo, another set of principles with regards to investing. So that's it for this one. Thanks and bye.